Raimundo, Raimundo Obando from uh, Bodegas you know? Las Orcas. Uh, this is one of my favorite humans on the planet, a very dear friend of mine. And, and Raimundo is the owner, the winemaker, the cellar master, the farmer. He does everything at uh, Bodegas Las Orcas in Rioja Alavesa. Raimundo, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Hello. Hello, thanks for your invitation. I'm so glad to see you again. Yeah. Absolutely, it's always good to um, see you. I'm looking forward to that and I hope in a few, not weeks, but in a few months, I can go and, and visit you, yeah. And come, come to the US, okay. I, I agree. So, so to kind of just outline how today will work, um, this is a virtual visit with Bodegas Las Orcas and we want to talk about the family, talk about the history, talk about the, the vineyards and where they're located, and um, essentially then start tasting through the wines that we currently have in stock. And if you are interested to taste anything that I have open and I'm tasting, just reach out to me, let me know, and I'd be happy to get samples to you to try. Because these wines are so exciting, so delicious, so typical of Rioja. And um, Raimundo, uh, I, I will share my screen to show some maps, but tell me where you're located. Okay, so we are located in La Guardia. La Guardia is in, in the Basque country, in the south of the Basque country. It, is, it belongs to a uh, situation, belongs to Rioja. So we are in the north of Rioja. We are in the south of the Basque country, but in the north of Rioja, where it, there, where it finished the Cantabria, the Sierra de Cantabria, where it finished the Pyrenees. So we also, we are in the south of Navarra. We are nearly only one hour by car to the Atlantic, to Bilbao, so three hours to Bordeaux. So we are in the north of, of Spain. Awesome. Rioja is a very old and well-known uh, wine of Spain. Absolutely. And so, so you can kind of see on the map where La Guardia sits. This is one of the most charming, beautiful cities in the world. Um, this is, it kind of sits on a hilltop and this overlooks the land. The Sierra de Cantabria is off to the left. Um, in fact, uh, actually I'll, I'll show another picture as well in just a bit, but this is such a beautiful area. And Raimundo, you grew up in LaGuardia? No, I no. grew up in Bilbao. In Bilbao, in Bilbao. In Bilbao, that's only one hour from, from La Guardia. My family, my grand-grandfather were industrial men. My family have factories of metallurgic uh, 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 um, engineers and, and okay. also the so it was very common in that in 100 years ago that the Basque people they like the the wine and so they decide to to create uh, some wineries. Aro Aro is the capital of the wine in, in Rioja. Yeah. So most of the old wineries in in Rioja, like uh, Lopez de Heredia, Cune. Uh, also, other other wineries were created by the Basque people, and my family created a uh, Cune. Uh, Your family started ago. Cune, yeah, amazing. That's crazy. My grandfather, two cousins, they by the two cousins of my grand grandfather went to Bordeaux. They learned how to make wine, and my grandfather only helped them with, so with the support. So, but the thing is that after some 40, 30, 40 years, when we start with the civil war. In Spain, part of my family uh, were against Franco. Were most of the family, so we, we we lost we lost most of the factories and also all the winery. But part of the family, we st we still have some uh, some shares of the company until the in the nineties, in the eighteen nineties. So more or less, my family had been related with uh, or have connection with until the until the nineties. In the nineties. Well, before in the 80s, I met uh, Christina in the university. We were studying uh, in the university, and, and Christina, her family was from La Guardia since ever. Well, and, and in fact, I can, I can tell you a small story that uh, La Guardia, the old town of La Guardia, have more than 3,000 years. They were Celtiberic uh, village, and 
two years ago, uh, some doctors from the University of Madrid compared the ADN of these people with the people of La Guardia and also from the family of, of Cristina, and they have 99% of connection. Really? That the Cristina's family has been forever here, so that is amazing. Cristina's family, see, they've been making for five generations, uh, they have always Guardia, and also they have been making wine in, in, in La Guardia. Okay. Always, in the 90s, Cristina and me, we decided to, with a small vineyards that she had, we bought in La Guardia, very old vineyards, we decided to start in 1994 with Bodega Las Orcas. And mm. The name of Bodega Las Orcas is with the new wine, because first we were making the wine in the old town of La Guardia, in the old caves, old uh, style, old tradition, but yeah, because of the new rules of the, make the wine out of the, out of the, of the, of the town. So we have to make a new winery, and when we're making the new winery, we found some, some tools uh, of 2,000 years that they were called Las Orcas. Orcas is like a, when you open the land, like a... Open, yeah. Like a, yeah. So, Las Orcas. So then, in the, you can see there, and in the, in the, in the down of the, of the page, you can see there la, la, the winery, yeah. The, yeah, that's, that's the old winery, yeah. Now it's, now it's the old winery also because we're having a new project. Right. So this, in 1999, we started in 1999 the construction and we've been there until, until this year that now we are making a new winery in the middle. We want to make a new winery in the middle of Finca San Angel. Finca San oh. Angel is 10 kilometer from La Guardia, going to El Ciego. <laughs> Right there. So it, that, that, will, that is where the new winery will be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, yeah. Where you're pointing. When, yeah, when yeah. pointing that mountain, yeah, we will make a, a two flat uh, winery and in the middle of the vineyard, looking to La Guardia and surrounded by our, some of our. The, in that area, we have nearly 10 hectares. So that Ooh. is going to be nice that we. Yeah, this is this is the view Both from where have... the new winery will be. This is Finca San Angel, the the vineyard site. Yeah, cool. That's true. So you can see the the Sierra Cantabria, the Cantabric uh, mountains, where it finishes. So that's the good this area that they, the, in the other part of the mountain is continental, is Atlantic uh, weather, is, and here uh, is Mediterranean weather. So it's a mix. Yeah, it's it's really interesting and. and like how far away you are from the Mediterranean Sea, but because of the way only yeah yeah it's true. only ways it's only from the Mediterranean yeah and only eighty miles from the Atlantic so nearly we are there in the middle of oh well, you're ocean, fairly in the middle uh, oh. okay yeah oceans cool cool so it's been in summer during the the day we have hot weather with nearly in Spain nearly thirty thirty five uh, centimeters. Really, 100, 105. But in at night, the the temperature drops down, and it's very cold weather. So very nice, and it's good for the for the grapes. Also, I have to say, of our of our area is a calcareous, a calcareous soil. Cal calcareous, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful limestone yeah. and beautiful, yeah. which is which is different. Uh, yeah, when we start in Rioja Alavesa, it's much more calcareous soil. And yeah. in, in Rioja Alta and Baja, what are the soils there? Yeah, it's more only clay. Yeah, more, only more clay, clay down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. They have, yeah, and also, so the ADC we a project uh, nearly already 30 years ago. The idea was to, own, because in Rioja, we are allowed to recollect, for example, of nearly 7,000 kilos per hectare and for white 10,000 but our idea was to recollect for for red only between three or four kilos per hectare and for oh. white only 2,000. So our idea is always not to make too much production so to do better quality and with production. Cool, cool. And Raimundo, how many hectares in total do you farm? So, Christina and me, we have that we are our owners, 
and also we control another 25 hectares. 25 hectares. Since more than the, since 30 years ago. So in total, 45 hectares. 45. To, that is because they have, belongs to all people this, each year to try to buy one hectare, two hectares. So here we have a, like a, like an idea that we have, we'll be owners of 45 hectares. But with a total production of only 150,000 kilos between 160,000 and 200,000. Okay, okay, great, great. And, and so what I like... Can be a, we, or what I was going to say is I, I love that in, in Rioja, there's a lot of wineries and a lot are kind of conglomerate and owned by bigger companies. They're owned by big you know, banks. And Bodegas Las Orcas, Raimundo's you know, family winery, it is owned by this, this sweet man right here. It's, it's, all, it's, it's a family estate in Rioja, which is not as easy to come by anymore. Um, there, there's, there is some, but no, not, not a lot. So, no. In Rioja, more or less, we have 70,000 hectares, and we more or less, the Rioja is nearly 400 million of kilos, 400 million oh. kilos. Wow. Yeah, but 80% is controlled by five huge groups. By really? 80%? 80%. So 20% is only in small for small families. Small family. uh, and also I can say that this year, Lucia, one of my daughters, is sexy generation already in the family, making wine. Well, she's been making wine all these years, but now officially she has finished all of his studies of... That's Our fantastic. engineer, also an allergist. She's been in Bugdo, in Madrid, in Pamplona. Now she's going to Galicia for harvest, also to Priorat. Cool. So to, yeah, to, Borgon, to Burgundy and to Bordeaux. So she has plenty of experience and she's coming back. And so this year, the next year will be, this 20, she will be the sixth generation. That's amazing. She'll, she'll, she'll teach her old man some, some things. Yeah. Right? <laughs> out, of, out of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And right, Raimundo, how do you, um, what are your farming practices like? What, how do you farm? Yeah, our idea is always to do it. We don't have the, because now many people require the eco certification. We, we, right. we make that kind of sustainable and eco agriculture. Cool, cool. Ever, and not kind of chemical stuff in our know, you know, no vineyards and also right. in our winery. So we hope that in three years, because this is a long, long process, uh, yeah, to, to find and to, to reach that kind of certification, we will have it in, uh, in three years. And also because with the new winery, with a winery in Rioja La Besa with a climate certification, uh, 100%. So sustainable, oh, yeah. That's awesome. All sustainable with the new project. That's that's new awesome. Wine. Yeah, yeah, and and that's what I've always loved about um, your your wines. Um, you farm completely, you know, sustainably and organically, and you're now going to go through the certification to to have that to have that uh, stamp. But um, it's it's the way you farmed for a long time, and it's wonderful, and you taste the the freshness. And the wines that are alive in the in the glass, it's it's really lovely. So, um, so let's. Uh, Thanks, Brian. You know, yeah, I mean, Raimundo, I've we've loved your wines for so so long. In fact, uh, when Bon Vivant Imports started back in two thousand and five, Raimundo was one of the very first um, wineries that we worked with and imported into the U.S. And we've been fortunate and lucky to have him as not only our Rioja producer, but also as a very dear friend. And so it's, it's lovely to have uh, Las Orcas in, in the book. And so we've got, a, we've got some really amazing wines to, to taste. Um, six different wines. All of these are current vintage that we have in stock. And so this is the, the 2018 uh, Solar Durandes Blanco. And Solar Durandes is a label that we have here in the States, and it means the house of Rondez, or Rondef, um, which is an old family name of Christina's, correct? Is that right, Raimundo? Yeah, yeah. of Christina's. Cool. Yeah. And, and, the old, family. Yeah. and the old house, um, 
this this is a this is a nice clear that is an old house that was yeah. destroyed by Franco right uh, back in the 30s From, yeah you, yeah you, so with this label we missed uh, both of the the name of Christina's family Rander and that house used to belongs to my family in near Haro Haro in Rioja yeah. that we were we have the been uh, in the civil war was destroyed so more or less it's like a uh, remember of my family. It's, it's cool. Days, yeah. And granted, we are going to be moving to some new new labels that we'll talk about later. But um, uh, the, the current vintage that we have all in stock is this is this packaging. So um, so 2018 Viura from how old now are these vines? 80, 85 well, years. Eighty five. Yeah, already eighty five years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, oh, yeah. Tell, tell me about how you make this wine because it, this isn't oxidative Rioja Blanco. Um, it's, no, no. it's made, made in fresh styles. So is this all in stainless steel? Yeah. So our idea is to make always the, with the white, to make a bright, uh, how you say, brillante, uh, a bright wine. Brilliant. Brilliant. Bright, brilliant. bright wine. Yep. Brilliant. Brilliant wine. Yeah. So, yeah. So our idea also is that as I told you before, uh, only we recollect 2,000 kilos per hectare. So when we recollect so small production, that will help to, to make better, better wine. So when we introduce the, the grapes in the, in the winery, only we distill, uh, press the, the grapes, we take it directly to the stainless steel. And in one day, we, we have it very cold uh, temperature, then we take out the piece. Uh, and then with a good lease, we maintain in that deposit for at least four days, one week to with, with, a, with a good lease. So then you more, more volume, also more structure. And then from the, then when you finish the, the alcoholic fermentation, directly to the bottle. So I think that's a while. I, I, love, I love this wine. It's this is um so viura is the same grape as macabeo if um if you think about those two different grapes from different languages essentially um and 85 year old bush vine in calcareous soil and the texture is incredible it's it's so it has volume but it has very fresh you know, vibrancy, brilliance, um, acidity that is very clean and, and stays very bright and fresh in the palate. A lot of like citrus and bright fruits like um, apples and pears, not as much on the stone fruit side, but much more that kind of, that wonderful kind of bite into an apple uh, freshness. Um, and it's, th the value of this wine is incredible. It's very serious white wine for a really great price. Um, and I absolutely love, I love drinking this wine and pairing this with so many different foods too. It's very versatile, versatile wine. Mm -hmm. So Raimundo, uh, do you use yeast for your white wines, red wines, rosé? Do you inoculate? No, they're all always, they're uh, natural. From, from natural the yeast always. fermentation. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, so good. It's so good. I love it. Um, this is, we don't have much of the 2000. Well, actually, Raimundo, do you still have 2018 Blanco or moving on to the 2019? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 18. We, we still have, because I think that, yeah, it was an excellent uh, harvest, excellent crop. So we still have, and I think that the evolution now is the... In, until next month and three, four months or for next year, it's still, I think it's so brilliant, so clean, so with a good acidity, yeah. And also, as you said, serious wine, because it has a structure, volume, mm -hmm. yeah. Really I nice. It's a very complex wine, very yeah, cool. really nice wine, yeah. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's move on to the Rosado, which I am, Raimundo, I've, I've loved your rosé for many years. 2019, it might be my favorite vintage. It's, it's so good. Tell me. We're trying to do it better. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me about this. Uh, what, what are the grapes? The grapes, always the, we try to do something different from our area 
in our area always they've been doing with tempranillo or garnache. And we always, since some years ago, we mass tempranillo and bura, and also with the the, the white, the white. Uh, grape. So, yeah. So more or less, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's more or less uh, 25% of garnacha, 20 of of tempranillo, and, and the rest of, of bura. So I think that this, this year, because it was a year very hot, also very with the high temperatures in the in the vineyard, we have with more alcohol and also with more structure. I think it's a rosé more, more how you say more serious, more complex. Yeah, yeah, a complex complex rosé. Yeah, it's complex. you you achieve a really light color and a really light freshness on you know in the mouth and on the on the nose. But it does, it has this different structure. So, Rai, tell me, um, when you, do you harvest the Tempranillo, Garnacha, and Viura all together and co-ferment? Or do you blend? Or how, how, do you, how does that work? Yeah. You, and then I, I blend it. Yeah. So you ferment separately, separately and then blend? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And how and long? It depends on... How long does the Tempranillo and the Garnacha stay on the skins? No, for only two days, eh? not, not too much. Eh? Two only days. Two days in cold, te- yeah, two days cold temping the, the grape juice. And, and after two days, with a, a, between an eight and nine uh, temperature uh, centigrade, we, we take juice and, and then we start with the rosé. It's so good. The, on, the, on the mouth, I get this wonderful wash of acidity, super fresh, but then there's a lot of really great structure in fruit. Um, if you think about ripe peaches, uh, you know, white peach to yellow peach to red peach, and that skin, when you, when you bite into that and it juices everywhere, it, it has so much wonderful stone fruit character, a little bit of like raspberry, kind of bright tart raspberry, and and the structure and the acidity is so long in the mouth. It's it's really really wonderful rosé. Mm. I think Not- so. That this year, yeah, that the, the acidity of this year, I think is is more important than other years. Not too much acidity, but it's enough to to keep it in, in to fill it yeah. in in good balance. Good balance, yeah. Are these Tempranillo vines and Garnacha vines very young? Or how old are the vines? Well, or young for us is 30, 40 years. So, yes. <laughs> well, that's like me. That's like me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, obviously, yeah, for the rosé, always we use the, the young wineries. Yeah. That they are between 30 and 40 years. Mm. So, and so you all know, this rosé is the only rosé that we stock throughout the year. Um, all, of, all of our rosé program is always allocated in the spring, but with Rise Rosé, we stock it year round. So if you want to, this is still something you can get a hold of. And even if your distributor, you know, or uh, you thought you were behind on rosé, we still have more. So uh, definitely get some of this because it's so delicious. It's so delicious. Um, right, let's, let's go to the Solar Durandes Hoven, Tempranillo Hoven. Hoven. 2018 is the current vintage, Hoven meaning young or unoaked. Um, and uh, this, is, this is your young, younger vines, right? The 30, 30 to 40 year old vines. The same, the same vineyards that we use for Rosé, also we use for Hoven. For the Hoven. Hoven, as, as you say before, is no oak. Is, I think it's, it's a very honest, so we, since we elaborate it, we finish the malolactic fermentation, goes directly to, to, the, to, the, to the bottle. So people can, what means Tempranillo? Because it doesn't have oak. So it's, this is a real, the real wine that we have in Rio Jalavesa. And I think that is, you can see the, also the, the, the Bright, it's very uh, also the aroms, the aromas, aroms, very typical from this area, from Rio Jalavesa. This is um, 
like Rai, Rai was just saying, the, this is true expression of Tempranillo because this didn't see any oak. It went straight into bottle, straight under the cr screw cap. And the amount of just fresh, pure grape that is available in this glass, this again, value is, is amazing to me because it's full of blueberry and boysenberry and, and marionberry and all of these wonderful, juicy, juicy berries that are ripe and delicious, but very balanced too. It's, it has acidity, it has freshness, it has brightness. This is amazing kind of concept is by the glass pour or just something that sits on the shelf at a really good price. Um, it's, it's, it's dynamite. It's this 2018 vintage, yeah. was this good Not, for you? Yeah. Good. One of the best in, in, in this period. And the good thing is that normally what we like to do is uh, when we start the, ferment, the alcoholic fermentation, we have it, when it finishes, we have it at least for two weeks with the maceration uh, controlling the temperature. And I think that they, the, when you talk about the structure, the volume of this wine is because when we finish the malolactic uh, fermentation, what we try to do is keep it, when we bottle, keep it at least six, between six and one year in bottle. Okay. The wine goes better, yeah. And so now you can see that it's a wine that you can drink it now. I think it's, now is the good moment to drink it. It's a great, it's a moment. great moment. It's a great moment. Um, yeah. Raimundo, the Tempranillo grape, are they thick skins or thin skins, medium skin? Like, uh, yeah, you compare it with Cabernet of grapes, I think it's more, it's more thin skin, yeah. More thin, yeah. Yeah, more thin. Yeah, and also with Graciano Garnacha. Graciano Garnacha, their hearts have more tannins also, more tannins inside of the skin. But here, Tempranillo, because also the harvest is sooner than the other ones, it's also, that's the reason, uh, a thin skin, yeah. Yeah. And so I that's the reason also that the... Oh, no, sorry. Tem um, I, I, th I Tempranillo. Think <laughs> Interesting that the Tempranillo... Um, when we think of Tempranillo, we think of Rioja, we think of Ribera del Duero, we think of big, structured, tannic wines. But it's interesting how much of that tannin may be coming from the oak aging, not from the actual grape. Because this is so soft in the mouth. It's, the tannins aren't hard. They're, they're, it's juicy. They're, there's some structure, but it's not... It's not chewy. It's really, really yeah. balanced. I, I, I like tasting this 100%. Yeah, but lucky, you know. yeah. Tempranillo in Rioja Laves or in Rioja in general is more smooth, the Tempranillo, than in Rivera. In Rivera, they have more tower. So that's the reason that the, the skin of the, of the Tempranillo in Rivera is, is, is stronger than it's here in, in Rioja. It's yeah. funny. Yeah, it's, it's, it's thicker. Yeah. And, so, and I think that the idea of, of of having this kind of wine so so elegant and so smooth is because of of that kind of grape yeah we are very lucky to have this kind of tempranillo here because it's it's very nice to make this kind of wines the people that perhaps they are not used to drink this kind of grapes they they can see that it's very easy to drink but also with elegance with good finish that they can tell you something interesting in that is interest but not so high or grapes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. The the balance is is much more more fluid. It's it's cool. Um, so let's let's go into the Finca San Angel. This is that vineyard site that we showed in the picture that uh, um, where the new winery will be. So Finca San Angel. This is true Criantha style, but um, Raimundo found it important to say that this comes from a very specific area. Um, and so this is, we actually have both a little bit of 2015 vintage left, but this is the 2016 that I'm talking about or that we're tasting today. So Raimundo, uh, talk about the Finca San Angel. Well, Finca San Angel is, as you said, is a single estate vineyard that is and where we're going to make the new project of the new winery is going to be in the middle of this we decide that because I think it's for us is one of the most important vineyards, and 
So we, we, we have a space to, to make the winery. And, and the grapes from this are nearly between 40, 50 years, or already old vineyards. We've been working with, with this kind of vineyard. Ah, okay. So you are... So the, yeah, next, that's the vineyards, yes. So you can, you can see this is the, the entrance of the vineyard. Uh, so you can see the, the entrance um, is, more, is more old, it's more linearly 80, 85, but the rest of the, of the vineyard is, is nearly in between 40 and 50. Okay. okay. Normally, we, we recollect between three and 4,000 kilos per San Angel. And then uh, when we start elaborating, we elaborate it with the, with the grape. We don't, uh, we don't crush the, the grape. We, we do it with whole. So when we introduce it in the, in the stainless deposit, we start the fermentation and we have it for nearly three weeks. And then we have it for the, for the, for the malolactic. And then we have it at least for 14 months in, in French oak, nearly one year and a half. And then at least again, one year or one year and a half in bottle. In so bottle. when the wine is in the market, I think it's already uh, that you can drink it and it's, it, how you say, green to drink it. So you can, it's, a, it's already matured. It's matured enough to drink the way you want to drink Rioja. Yeah. 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 But so, I think that young, eh? you can, I think yeah. that you can see the, the color and it is young. I don't know if you can realize. But it is, it's, it's elegant young, the on, the, on the, in the mouth. It's, it's really wonderfully balanced. Um, uh, Raimundo, you said this spends, you know, 14 months in French oak. Is this uh, barrique in 225 liter French oak barrels? Yeah. And yes, new 225 oak? liters. New or used oak? No, for Finca San Angel, two, two, three years. Two, three yeah. years. I like that the, here, the I like that the, pro, how you say, protagonist, the actor mm -hmm. of the, of, of this uh, the, the movie. The protagonist, yeah. Is the, is the great. <laughs> is the protagonist, yeah. <laughs> Protagonista in Spanish. It's, it's very close. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> yeah. Raimundo, protagonist, this, yeah. So this, I think that... In, in, yeah, um, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. No, I am saying that for me, the important thing is that people, when taste or wines, they have, to, they have to feel and have to taste the grape. So that we use two, three years, uh, uh, the old, uh, the age of the oak barrels. So I think that when you taste it, you have the complex of the, of the oak, but you can feel the grape, the fruitness, yeah, and, and also the, I think it's a, a wine that you would like it. I, I think that's a great way of, of describing it. Um, even though I, f I, can, I can see the, the, the oak influence, I really do feel the grape here. The Tempranillo is, is shining still. Uh, there's more tannin in this, a little bit, there's obviously more structure, but the fruit is very fresh. I still see a lot of that kind of brambly, it maybe not so bright, ripe blueberry boysenberry, but more brambly kind of full, full berry, more earthy, more, more um, forest is involved with the, the mouthfeel. And it's so elegant. It's really beautiful. I, Rai, I'm, I'm so happy to be drinking these because it's the middle of summer. It's 100 degrees outside. It's 40, 40 degrees right now outside. And I don't usually drink your wines in the middle of the summer. And it's so good to taste these right now. They're, they're amazing. I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Um, so let's, let's taste now the Reserva. 2014 is the current vintage Reserva, so six years now, um, and I, Raimundo knows that I absolutely love this vintage of Reserva because um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what went down on 2014, but it's, it's good, it's real good. So Raimundo, again, oh, was. Think of San Angel, 100% Tempranillo. In 16, we have also a little bit of Graciano. It was Graciano. A little bit of Graciano. Okay. Um, yeah. So morally, when you can feel the acidity of the, of the wine, it's because of the Graciano. Yeah. Gotcha. Raimundo, all of a sudden, um, you, became, you became more quiet. Did, uh, 
did anything happen on your on your computer? It's a little quiet. Well, can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're very soft and quiet now. I'm not sure what happened. Is did the headphones come out? No. No. Okay. Well, if you speak loudly, I think it's okay. <laughs> Oh, there you, uh, no, it's the same, same. It's okay. The same. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's okay. We Just, you have to think that we are, in a, we are in a medieval village. <laughs> it is, LaGuardia is in the middle of nowhere. You're right, you're right. So the, the Reserva is 100% Tempranillo. Yes, yeah. 24 months in French soap, it, they were recollected from, from the vineyards that they're already also from 50 to 60 years old. Also, there's more recollection, and also we make that a selection in the vineyards, and then, then also another selection for the reserva. It's going to be a wine that's going to be more time in the market, and it's going to be a reserva says more, more serious wine. We also we try to recollect the, the top top uh, grapes for other reservoirs. Cool. It's so we have it at, at least two years in French oak, and then uh, at least another two years or three years in bottle. In bottle. So, uh, and and what's always interesting is your your reserva technically could be Grand Reserva, correct? Yeah. Yeah. You you age that way. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody use a big white group. And we, are, we don't like, you know, always in the market, when you see a reserva, they only do it the, the huge Austino, Coto, this kind of winery, Ramon Bilbao. Right. So, right. So we, and and this, is, this is all, it says all it needs to. This is beautiful. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Is this new oak? Um, is the, so for, Two years in barrel, or is it more new oak or also used? A little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's. Comparing with that, this has more tannins, with very long finish. The reserve has important. There's a. There's a savory quality to this wine um, that I find even more so in the next wine as well. But we have wonderful fruit. We have really wonderful length, uh, balance, great depth. There's good fruit, but there's a lot of earth. Um, and this savory note, it's not herbal, but it's maybe a little bit of herbs, like dried herbs and fresh herbs all together. But this, this, savory quality that makes me want to keep drinking. The acidity is fresh. Um, this is a 2014 current vintage and it's still drinking very young, but really very elegant. So it's beautiful. Um, so let's go to the Selection Especial. This is a 2012, very special wine that I'm, I'm excited about and uh, always happy to drink. Um, this is kind of, uh, Raimundo, this is 100% Tempranillo again? Also have a little bit of Graziano. Oh, with a little bit of Graziano. Okay. And tell me, tell me about the, the process here. How is this made? for the old vineyards, we decided to wine, special bottle and also a special fermentation. Instead of making, because the rest of the, of the wine, we, we introduce it, the grapes in the deposit. This one, we do it in uh, 5,000 kilos, uh, French, uh, a year uh, deposit. So we, we do the, uh, the alcoholic fermentation in uh, for, so then 
you can see them after finishing the malolactic. Also, we put probably we have it in and three years at least between two and three years in stem cells. Wow. And then the rest four years. Wow. Four years in bottle. So, and and how old are the vines here again? This is the old uh, vines. Yes, yeah, sixty up to seventy years old. Sixty, seventy years old. Yeah. Um, the 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 I mean talk about elegance and and expansion on the palate. This is so very vibrant while still being so smooth and delicious and creamy. Not oaky creamy, but um just soft. It's it has this really wonderful structure in the mouth that isn't overly tannic, but it's it has it's kind of the the word supple, supple tannins, I suppose. It, very round, well fruited very earthy, very savory, uh, while being kind of still lifted and light on, the, on its feet. It's, it's really, really beautiful. I, I love it. I love, I love this wine. And I don't get to drink it often enough because, you know, this is, this is the one we want to sell to all you special, special accounts that want some, something really, really neat on the shelf. Um, but it's, it's beautiful. Right, this is so good. Um, so... Be, it's still young, I think so, eh? It uh, very long. It goes forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be, be, before before we go, I want to kind of. Um, Raimundo was talking about how there's a new uh, new winery, but we also want to. I at least want to show you what the new packaging is going to look like. Um, so this is the new label. Uh, for for the line going forward. Um, so I think we will actually get some rosé this year of the new label, but um, the, the box, the packaging, everything looks amazing, Raimundo. I, I really like it. And this will be kind of the, the, the range, all in burgundy bottle. Oh. What's that? Behind that box is a special cases where that one, where you can see near the box, the cases, that's have more than 100 years. We used to of family grapes in that kind of wooden, we call yeah. Oh, in, in these old, in these old uh, um, oak, oak barrels. Those are cool. That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. So. With horses. Really? One, one per, per, yeah, the horse, two by per, uh, yeah. With two barrels on e each horse. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Well, Raimundo, it is always so good to see you and to spend time with you and to taste your wines and to talk about everything you do. Um, I so appreciate uh, working together. It's, it's amazing. And I hope you all want to taste some of these wines, but uh, we'll let you go for now. Raimundo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for all the people here and I hope that you can try your wines and you can see that we are uh, an honest and authentic uh, winery family. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye.